Hi, my name's Eric Anzalone. Welcome back to What Matters Most. Today we're in Pipersville, Pennsylvania at Brad's Chip Factory. Now, if this place looks familiar to you, good eyes. We open season two here interviewing Brad Grunow and renowned raw foodie and chocolatier David Avocado Wolf. And speaking of raw food enthusiasts, our guest today is Barbara Shevkin from Rawfully Tempting. Barbara's journey into raw food began in 2009, and what started as an exploration into healing resulted in a new toolbox for building foods that are literally alive with color, flavor, texture, and healing nutrients, and life. Barbara takes raw foods and creates delectable meals, and her recipes are dairy and processed sugar-free, gluten and wheat-free. They're vegan and plant-based. And I don't know about you, but I'm hungry. So let's get out of this rawful cold and go find Barbara. And maybe have a little taste of something she's whipped up. Barbara fell in love with a unique new palette of ingredients and refined a new palette for tasting them. Uh, she quickly became the driving force behind Rawfully Tempting. And also you have a raw food uh, vegan blog, which you can find at rawfullytempting.com. She holds uh, cooking demonstrations, workshops, you have a, a, a cyber cafe, she sells ebooks, and get this, she's also available for private raw food coaching. Raw, 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 sis, boom, ba! <laughs> Sorry, that was uh, that was kind of more of a raw food cheerleader, not not a coach. But enough fun and games, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Barbara Shevkin. Nice to be here. Doing? How you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. Welcome and welcome to Brad's. Thank you, Brad, for opening your doors to us again. Um, now, back in 2009, you were dealing with some significant health challenges that prompted you to travel down this path. Mm -hmm. So, how has eating this way changed your life? Wow, substantially. Um, in my dreams, I had never ever imagined that this was a path that I would be taking. Mm -hmm. And when I had these health issues that I was dealing with and I had read about raw food and all of these wonderful healing stories, I decided I'll give it a try, I'll yeah. give it a try. And I, and I started dabbling, um, probably started with green smoothies in the morning and even just the little bits that I would add to my diet, I noticed I had more energy. Um, things like chronic insomnia, chronic sinusitis, um, acid reflux, mm -hmm. like we're disappearing, just disappearing. Right, so when you said you started dabbling, because when, when people talk about raw foods, anyone who doesn't understand about it will probably just think, oh, you just eat salads all the time. <laughs> Right? Yes. I mean, was that, did you understand what raw foods was or did you originally think that, like that? No, I did. I had, I had started to see some of these like amazing desserts that people mm -hmm. were making. Of course, I was a, you know, a, a snack junkie at the time and addicted to sugar. And I thought, wow, you mean I can have like healthy desserts? Mm -hmm. And so I started looking online and I saw all these pictures that looked beautiful and saw these recipes that were very intriguing. And I bought a few books. I got some recipes offline. And it was really a short period of time I would wake up and I'd have a recipe in my head. And I would say, you know, I need to make this. But, you know, it's a lifestyle change and you can do it as fast or as slow as you want to. Nobody has to go 100% raw like that mm -hmm. or ever. Um, but it certainly, I'm sure lots of people are looking for ways to enhance their diet and enhance their lifestyle by adding healthy foods. Right. So it does go, this goes beyond like health benefits. Oh and yeah. Oh yeah. Well, what, what happened is I started eating the food and I felt differently. And then as I was preparing the food, for me, it was a very spiritual thing. The food is alive, it's raw. And I started, I'm a very spiritual person and I started feeling very close to nature. I could feel the food was coming directly from Mother Earth. And it became something very sacred to me. And then I even got involved in some sprouting. And then it was like, look at you know these little babies. I talked to them, plant these little seeds and they grow and, and they're alive. And then you make something delicious with them. Sprouting, actually, there is a, a really a health benefit yeah. to, to allowing foods to sprout, right? Yes. What, what exactly happens? When you take a seed and you sprout it, the enzymes and the nutrients increase, multiply. It's you know, and a seed and a nut are dormant. So when you soak it and you start to sprout it, it's alive. 
I have some things that are in my refrigerator that I think are, are sprouting, <laughs> but I don't know. That's what a little that, different kind of yeah, alive. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the health benefits of that would be. So um, eating this way obviously has fed your soul and, yeah. and lit a fire, a passion yeah, in you. Yeah. yeah. Can you describe then how that directed your life? I mean, this became a, a lifestyle for you, yeah. but then you started sharing it with others. Yeah. Well, when I started seeing these benefits you know, that I was feeling better and mm. things that I had lived with for a really long time were sort of starting to disappear on me and I was regaining a lot of, you know, my health and my energy and my vitality. Then I started getting creative with it because I'm a creative person and, and I think we're put here as creators. So creating food and creating snacks and treats and then giving that to other people that I love mm -hmm. and care about was a whole nother, that took it to a whole nother level, being of service to other people. Um, that was a joy to see someone's face light up and I'll watch yours when I feed you some of these goodies. Isn't it, food is sort of, it is what we need for nourishment, but it's also a ritualistic yes, thing. It's it people to share, to break yeah, bread exactly. with others. So. Yeah, community. Yeah. yeah, and did people notice, w without knowing that you had changed anything, did they notice a, di a, a oh, difference yeah. in you? Yeah, my, my hairdresser um, said, oh my God, your skin looks so much better and your hair is so much healthier. And people said I've looked younger. Um, yeah, people noticed. They definitely noticed. And then you've sort of answered, but why do you think that um, eating this way changes people's lives? I I is it the food so much, or is it the energy that's involved? I mean, I, I think, think is well, I think that there's something to be said for that too. The food is is vibrating. It's alive. Yeah. So you're bringing food into your body that's alive. That's going to raise your energy vibration. But it's also you're eliminating sugar. Yeah. You're eliminating animal products. You're eliminating like unhealthy fats. You're eliminating processed grains. Mm -hmm. And that was when I nixed dairy and I nixed processed grains. That's when I started seeing a lot of health benefits. Yeah. And, and like you, you say, you, you put a lot of love into your food. Yes, and main ingredient. When, when, I th when, I, when I was reading about that, I was thinking to myself that when you, when you actually touch food, and you just said vibrations, mm -hmm. you know, there are vibrations. So you're actually putting, do you think about love the and intention? stuff when you're, when you're doing it? Because Absolutely. like if you're having a bad day and you grab a, a piece of food, then you're <laughs> yeah. transferring that energy, that negative energy no, but into you know the food. What? Is you that use, you, I use the food as a meditation. So if I've had a bad Good. day, when I get there, it's like I, I take a moment and I pause and I ground myself and it's like, and then I say, okay. And then it makes me feel better. Yeah. So yeah. And people have actually said to me, I feel the love in your food. Yeah. I can feel it. It's yeah. when we did our uh, first show here for the second season, uh, we took to talk to David Wolf, who has mm -hmm. sacred chocolate, and they actually bless their chocolate yes. as they're doing. Mm -hmm. So it's blessed. Yeah, it, yeah. And, and again, yeah. that's an energy thing, yes. no, no matter what you believe, because food is living and raw food is living. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Yes, I mean, it you're is not living. cooking it. You're not. Yes. And then when I found out that I can recreate some of the comfort foods that we grew up with and I knew weren't healthy and make them in a healthy form, that was like, well, just, that was awesome to me. You know, make desserts, decadent desserts uh -huh. and, you know, taco chips and brownies and cookies mm -hmm. and, you know, salads that aren't like just lettuce like and salad, tomato. Right. So yeah, there's the variety. That's what people don't realize. The variety is endless. Um, now that love expanded beyond the food mm -hmm. and you got a uh, a plot of land in a community garden yes i did so how did that further expand this experience this journey of that yours? was oh, that was amazing because honestly i never liked gardening to oh. me it was just a big pain <laughs> pain in the butt so i said you know i, I just want to try this and it got a nice little 10 by 10 plot in our com in a community garden and started growing lettuce and tomatoes and peppers and i've never really had that kind of land to grow my own food. Mm -hmm. And you know, a couple of times a week we'd go and we'd cut things off and we'd come home and we'd make a salad from fresh lettuce that we just picked from the garden. I was so inundated with tomatoes and peppers that I dehydrated them. And I made my own crushed red pepper mm. and I made my own sun-dried tomatoes. And it, it's just amazing. It's just such a different feeling when it, it, you planted the seed, you grew it, you picked it, and then you prepared it. It's mm -hmm. just really nice. Now, what's significant for our viewers to know is that even though you, you eat raw food and it's your lifestyle, you're not a complete purist, no, right? absolutely you not. You do eat some cooked yes, food. Yes, I do. 
Uh, is that by choice, or sometimes you just there's no other way, or do you, you feel know, there's moder good things in moderation? I think everyone has to do what works for them, and there are times where I really want to be closer to 100% raw, mm -hmm. and there are other times where I just want a hot bowl of soup, especially in the winter. Living in the East Coast, it gets cold, and I have a, just a hard time in the winter time eating raw food all the time. I feel definitely feel better the more raw I eat. And when I start eating more cooked food, I, I do, I feel it. I feel the difference. Mm -hmm. So I like to stick to as do much. Do you ever have muscle. runs where, um, and I don't mean that technically, uh, not the runs. But <laughs> <laughs> that was I'm bad. Oh. That's really, really bad. That's what we were doing. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it's a matter of fact. <laughs> Do you ever have periods though where you? It's worse. I know. <laughs> oh my God! I'm, I'm oh, trying not to laugh. That is gotta I'm be trying from the not to laugh. <laughs> no, actually, I'm it's gorgeous. it's been a few years. Are there ever spans of time, like a week or so, where you're not able to eat raw foods? And if so. Does it really do? You, does it really bring you down to the point where oh my god, I've got to start over? Or has your body become so in tune with the raw foods that hey, if you fall off the wagon for a little bit, it's okay? I don't think I'd ever go that long. I would have something oh. like when I traveled, I actually brought a, a travel blender so I can make smoothies. Mm -hmm. So for instance, my mom was in the hospital for three months and we had to live in a hotel room. So we went and we, we, I brought a travel blender and we got the ingredients and I made a smoothie every That's morning. Cool. And I would bring chopped celery and whatever I could to the hospital, an apple. And then dinner, I, we would eat out. And at that point, I would eat cooked food. But, and I, I would say because raw foods, just saying that to people, it's, it's intimidating. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. um, but you break down recipes and, and uh, you know, methods for, yes. for your for yeah. people who are interested, that's, right? That's one of the things I think that people like about my, my blog is the way I write my recipes. It's as if I'm in the kitchen with you. I really do walk you through step by step. And a lot of times people are put off because they'll see ingredients that they're not familiar with. Mm -hmm. and, I, and it's like, that was the thing that intrigued me the most is I, when I saw, kept seeing an ingredient in the recipe and I wanted to know what it was. So I started playing with it. And that's the best way to learn is just get it and try it. You, you do have to start using different ingredients to replace some of the foods that you're not going to eat anymore. Yeah. So then what, what else is coming up on the horizon for Rawfully Tempting? Oh, goodness. Well, my, my Living Cookies ebook is out. Um, and you can get that on, online on my site. I am actually working on several recipe books and um, a, a living pizza book is, is in the works. And I'm always doing my classes. I say check my website and see you know, what current classes are going. Contact me if anybody has a Rawflytempting.com. Rawflytempting.com. Uh, are there any other websites that you contribute to? Or Facebook, or? I'm on Facebook. Oh, yeah, you check, are. Check, yeah, Rawfully Tempting. I have a page there so, yeah. and a couple of groups if people want to join my groups, so yeah. Mm, all this talk about foods making me hungry, and we, we have a little bit here. So I do, you, you've prepared some food for yes, us, which we're going to go over and, and yeah. taste. But before we do that, the name of the, the show is What Matters Most. And we like to ask our, our guests what matters most to them. So, for example, when you're no longer here, what impression would you like to leave behind? What lasting, what's the lasting imprint you'd like to leave? I think... People are, are so fearful of change that it sometimes holds them back and they, and they, they say, I want, to, I want to eat healthier, I want to do better, and then they sabotage themselves. So just knowing that you, you do have some control over your life and how you feel and by making subtle changes, no, don't set yourself up for failure. Start little bits at a time. Add a green smoothie, add a salad, whatever it is that's easy for you, but know that you're contributing to your own health and if I can spread that word and let and enable people to find ways mm -hmm. to make wonderful, delicious, decadent food and feel better, you know, what, that's like the best thing. Wonderful. And believe me, it, it, they are decadent. You should see what's laid out for us over there. So can we go eat? Absolutely. <laughs> Good. <laughs> right. After you, chef. Oh, wow. Yummy! <laughs> this is why I love my job. 
Remember, this is all raw food, correct? Raw, raw vegan. Raw vegan, so it, it hasn't been cooked. It hasn't been cooked and everything is plant-based. Okay, so then what, what are these uh, tortillas made out of? These are spicy jalapeno taco shells. Okay. And they are made from corn, uh -huh. red bell pepper, hemp seed, and lots of Mexican Southwestern seasoning. Right, and how do you get, if they're not baked, what do you, like like for example these, how do you mold them so that they stay like that? I mean, okay, that was new, I just that's the first time I did that. But basically, you, you take your batter, everything gets blended in a high right. speed blender, and you pour the batter onto a non-stick um, dehydrator tray. Okay. Okay, I dehydrated that probably six to eight hours on one side. And then I flipped it over, so the, the bottom side is now dry. Mm -hmm. And I took, you know, the little silicone cupcake yeah, sure, molds, course, right. just pressed it into a silicone cupcake mold, and then dehydrated it for another eight to ten hours. All right, so then what are we going to fill these with? Or? Okay, well, we have taco meat, okay, which perfect. looks like looks taco, like taco meat, meat, doesn't it? But yeah. there's no meat in but it. But there's and no meat in it. It's plant-based. Plant-based, so, so and it's it? never been cooked. This is made from walnuts, okay. sun-dried tomatoes, and a lot of Mexican spices, cumin, coriander, um, a little cayenne to make it a little spicy. Okay. Bam, kick and it up a notch. That's walnut. Walnut. Okay, so that's walnut. And mm -hmm. then. And this is basically refried beans. No beans, not fried, like unrefried beans. And these are made from almonds and sun dried tomatoes. And then a little different variation on the spices. And what happens with, with raw food is people have a real comfort attachment to foods that they grew up with. Mm -hmm. So I try to replicate texture. Yeah. So it looks very much like foods that you're used to eating that are cooked. Does te texture and, and also like a visual too. And a visual, exactly. That's what the, the mind puts together, yes. the texture and the visual. Yes. Right. Um, but this begs the question, because beans, I'm, you know, I always assume are, well, they're a natural food, they're, mm -hmm. so why wouldn't you just use real beans? Well, you, you can, but you'd have to sprout them, because you can't cook them right. to be raw. Um, and personally, I like the texture of the almonds right, the better. Uh -huh. um, you, this is uh, the cheese sauce. Oh yeah, so cheese sauce, but cheese this, there's no cheese in it. No there's cheese no in it. That is actually made with hemp seeds, which is Again, extremely cashew. nutritious. Yeah. And that's also um, made with cashews, which raw cashews, which when blended creates an absolutely beautiful, creamy, rich Where can you buy things texture. like hemp seeds? You know, it's not like I can go to shop right and buy a hemp seed. Actually, right? if you go you? into the health food section, a lot of the regular supermarkets are carrying them. If you go to a health food store, you'll definitely yeah. find them. I buy a lot of mine online just because it's easier and I like to buy them in bulk. And then we have... This is a kickin' mango salsa. So it's like a traditional salsa, yeah. only, you know, it's tomatoes and Red pepper, yellow pepper, and a lot of mango, cilantro, parsley, and then well, you know, some variation of spices. And now this, this is fascinating to me because <laughs> this looks like a, some sort of rice salad or some sort looks of grain, like, like a tabbouleh or something. But This is a southwestern style rice, and basically it's made of cauliflower. Cauliflower? Cauliflower. See, that's cauliflower. That's cauliflower that looks like the rice, and then we've got corn, we've got red pepper, um, orange bell pepper, yellow bell pepper, broccoli, um, onions, and it's all mixed together with avocado, and it's got a very light lime, olive oil, and salt and pepper dressing. And how do you get the cauliflower? Do you shred it? Food you, processor. I, oh. Food processor. Of course. Yeah. But it looks, it looks like rice, it has a mouthfeel like rice, and... It, it looks, the colors are vivid and beautiful. I'm sorry, here I Ready? am, I'm going to help myself. But <laughs> Absolutely. Since I'm afraid I won't do it right, I you know, I'll just make a mess sure. of it. Why don't you, uh, okay, here, have your you know, plate. Get another plate. All right, let's just... start with some of the unrefried beans. I like that, unrefried. Mm -hmm. Are you a fan of Mexican food? I love Mexican food. I love the flavor. Yeah. But I've actually become a bigger fan of raw Mexican food. What I find is, um, when I eat the raw food, it, the digestion process is so much easier. Yeah. And usually when you go out and you eat a traditional cooked meal, when you're done, you just want to lay down and take mm -hmm. a nap. And when you eat a raw meal, you're energized. You mm -hmm. feel, you don't have that heavy, bloated, you know, yucky feeling. Yeah. So I, I love the way it makes me feel. Yeah, it's interesting because you would think, because cooking actually breaks down 
the fibers and uh, of, of foods, right? So you would think that it would be the other way, that your body would be working extra hard to digest raw well, food cooking, because it hasn't been... Cooking breaks down the, the enzymes in the food. See, food, raw food comes with its own natural enzymes, which help digest them. When you cook it, you kill the enzymes. So the digestion process actually works better oh because God. you haven't killed the enzymes. I just learned something new. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so now okay, so there's our taco meat. Meat. And then we'll put a little cheese sauce on here. I love cheese. Oh, we have these lovely uh, colorful beverages to enjoy as well. You, you made these, right? Correct. That is actually um, water kefir. Mm -hmm. which is similar to people, a lot of people are more familiar with kombucha. There's milk kefir and there's water kefir. These are water kefir mm -hmm. and they feed basically off of sugar water, which sounds kind of like weird because I don't eat sugar, right. but they do. And they eat the sugar and in, while they're fermenting, it produces a, a sort of an effervescent probiotic. They break down the sugar and you can tell because when you make it the first day, it, it's real, 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 real mm -hmm. sweet and sugary. And two days later, you let it ferment 48 hours you come in and it's, it's not so sweet, and then you add fruit to it mm -hmm. to flavor it. So we've got ginger, and we've got strawberry, and we've got, I'm not sure what else is up there, but it takes on the flavor of the fruit, and it breaks down the, the fruit sugar also, and it takes got it. beautiful flavors. And if we flavors. let it sit for a couple months, would it oh, turn God. into cranberry? Probably vinegar, no, it would be like oh. vinegar. <laughs> it would be okay. like vinegar. Okay, so, so we've got your taco made, yeah. and we'll give you some southwestern rice, and then, I don't know if you want to top it with some red onion yes, and, I do. and peppers that way. I'll let you do that. All right. The colors are just, they jump off the plate. I know this is a white plate, but I mean, it's just it's wonderful. Again, I would imagine cooking uh, breaks down the colors in food too, right? Mm -hmm. just, yeah. Yes, it does, definitely. And that's ginger ale. Oh, okay. Healthy ginger. <laughs> smell too. You just you yeah, don't. Yes. Yeah. And the flavor when you get it in your mouth, it's just like. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to get it in my mouth right now. First, I'm <laughs> going to cleanse my palate with a little ginger Some ale. Ginger ale. Mm. 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 What are those raisins in there? Raisins, because it, it starts to get sour as it's fermenting. So I throw some raisins there mm. and, and actually fresh. Yeah, I, I get a little of the fermentation taste, mm -hmm. but you know what? I actually like it's that. It's pleasant. It's it a is. very pleasant flavor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like a, a cider almost. Okay. Um, here goes. You know what? I'm just gonna use my hands. There you go. I always <laughs> wash my hands and and sanitize. So all you people out there, here we go. This is not gonna be pretty. I mean, really, really, people. Mm. If there was like taste o vision, I would so have you try this. This is amazing. I mean, it's got the textures. I'm not a big meat eater, but I can tell you, th this would, I, I, any meat eater would love this. That, that's truly. Yeah, the texture and right. the flavor is so reminiscent of Mexican food. That is just so clean. And Very fresh. light, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of my favorite dishes. I mean, and this would be great too, like on a summer afternoon or something like that where it's hot. Where you Absolutely. don't want to eat lots of hot Absolutely. food. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But this is a great... This is a great summer salad. Mm -hmm. People are coming over for lunch. I mean, this is a, an excellent salad to serve. I'm very impressed. I mean, I've had raw food before, but there's something also in the presentation of this that, again, is a very visual mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and experience. And eating should be an experience. It, it is an experience. It shouldn't just be wolfing down the food. Yeah, exactly. You should be able to enjoy it and... Uh, Wow, I, you know, I know you talk about putting love into your food, and I, I, I can Thank taste you. the love. Can you Thank feel the love, you. people? <laughs> feel the love. Mm. <laughs> mm. Absolutely, mm. you can. That's a, you know, you really can. Mm. That's love. the cheese sauce. I love some cheese. <laughs> I'm gonna put some on this. There you go. Oh my god. <laughs> so you're already a raw chef. I could. You Look at it. It looks like um, <laughs> I kind of do this. It kind of looks like art. You know, like I could take a picture of it. It looks like you could go on that wall right there. <laughs> it's so <Beautiful>. creative. <laughs> Mm. Mm -hmm. There you go. Well, a new recipe. It is. Oh yeah. Where can people get these recipes? Absolutely. Somewhere? If they go to my website, uh -huh. rawfullytempting.com, there's hundreds and hundreds of recipes, but these can mm. be found there as well. Now, because this food is all natural and raw, 
there, it, there's a higher density, correct? Correct. And, and that which technically means... It's very nutrient dense. Right. Which means that you don't need to eat as much as you would have cooked food. You're satisfied much easier on a smaller amount. Yes. So this, this you know, that's like, usually the tacos would be smaller. I made these little bowls, like I would eat this and yeah. that, and that would be a meal. Right. Because every, it's so, it's dense, it's solid. There's no fillers, there's no flours, mm -hmm. there's no junk mixed in. Everything that you're eating ha is loaded with yeah. nutrients. But dense or not, you always have to save room for dessert, right? That's correct. So now for the piece de resistance, right? You got it. Because seriously, what meal is complete without dessert? And if it was up to me, we would have started with this. So, um, Barbara, what do we have? Here we go. Wow, look at that. Oh my gosh. Wow, okay, so what is this? This is a triple layer. Anything that starts with triple, triple is gonna be good. Triple layer cheesecake. Cheesecake. But Obviously, there is no, no cheese, cheese. But we try to make it as reminiscent as we can of a cheesecake. Okay, triple layers. Triple but layers. What are those layers? Well, you've got white chocolate, dark chocolate, peanut butter, and in between each layer is a chocolate crumb. Fabulous. Okay, let's try some. Mm. Barbara Shevkin, Rawfully Tempting. A woman who puts her heart and soul into her creations and has learned that when life hands you a batch of lemons, if you can make triple layer lemon cheesecake, or better yet, chocolate, you can change your world. And she certainly has changed mine today. Reminding us all, once again, it's the simple things in life that matter most. Mm. <laughs> Namaste. Mm. Oh my. Mm. <laughs>